do a short clip today on emotional intelligence. Um, we've spoke about narcissism quite a bit over the over the years, and one of the hallmarks of narcissistic personality is they have a very low emotional IQ. Now, if you tell a narcissist that, they're going to argue with you, of course, because they believe they have a very high emotional IQ. Um, in fact, they're so emotional that they want um, that they really want to absorb all of your emotions. One of the hallmark narcissistic thoughts that uh, Kurt Cobain shared was, I don't care what you think as long as it's about me. And so the emotional IQ of a narcissist is probably set at um, really not feeling empathy, not feeling like that sense of concern for, for other people's uh, moods and perspectives. And so their IQ emotionally with, uh, with narcissism is more about being concerned about how you can fill their bucket and what purpose you have in their life. And they actually believe everybody else feels the same way. And so to be a really good narcissist, you would have to like look at the world as a chess game where everybody's kind of moving their pawns around and moving their bishops and rooks around. And you're doing the same, trying to like win before they do, trying to like get ahead of them, trying to outdo them, outmaneuver them. And it's a game. And that's why they have very little time for introspection because they're too busy trying to figure out how you're trying to take advantage of them and gaslight and get ahead of you. So to have emotional intelligence, and you can train in this, you move away from narcissism. In fact, a treatment for narcissistic personality is helping them gain emotional IQ, helping them train in emotional IQ. And so one of the hallmarks of emotional IQ is, is this ability to have self-awareness. So emotional IQ is literally the ability to manage your own emotions and understand the emotions of people around you. So let me say that again. Emotional IQ is your ability to manage your emotions or self-soothe and be aware of the emotions of people around them, or in other words, help them soothe if they need you. In a relationship, the two main skills um, that I'll teach couples after empathy and repentance are how to soothe so that you can have a conversation without flooding and how to help your partner soothe when they're flooding. And so those are super important skills. And if you have a high emotional IQ, you can self-soothe. You don't just freak out and stay flooded. And you help your partner soothe because you have a high emotional IQ. You know how to see their perspective and help them de-escalate. And it's not your responsibility to make them de-escalate. It's your responsibility to assist them in de-escalating. And so <clears throat> some ideas around um, self-regulation and around motivation and around empathy and social skills, these, these all emotionally IQ-charged ideas have some, some rules to them. First, um, let's learn to respond, not react. When I react, it puts you in charge. Like if you say, um, uh, I hate Mormons and I start defending, just I react because I think that's silly to hate Mormons. That's like, like the kind of a bigoted statement that people will make. And so to, to react to that would be like that, that the antis being like in charge of my emotional management, my emotional um, self-regulation. So rather than react to things, respond well. Anything you hear come your way, ponder it for a moment, run it through the filter of who you are and your perspective, and then offer feedback or offer empathy or offer uh, active listening. So responding will always earn you some element of respect. Responding will keep you out of being the reactor that's pulled around by the nose by people. And so learning to have a high emotional IQ and to be powerfully um, effective with people, um, whenever you're challenged, you, you won't blurt out things you don't mean. You'll filter it through who you are, through that self-awareness piece. Second one is journaling. People that have high emotional IQs generally journal. Now, I'm not a huge journaling person. I, it, it's something, for some reason, I never uh, hit the habit of doing. I never uh, really got into it. But I do know when I write things down, when I write an article, or when I write a, a script, it's literally slows my thinking down and it increases my self-awareness. And so that's the hallmark of journaling 
it's um, really posing these questions. Like as, I, as you journal, it's like, um, where do I excel? What do the people around me see? How are they, how are they feeling about the things that I'm journaling? And um, what, what, what are the circumstances or situation that caused emotional responses that I'm journaling about? Active listening. Active listening is an art skill. In order to be an effective active listener, you have to, you, you really have to know how to clear you out of the way. Um, some people would call it like create a cipher inside of you where you have no self for a moment while you're listening to their self. And if you can clear your bias and your person out of the way and really listen, um, you become a good communicator. And some of the skills of active listening, it's, um, in fact, one thing I would put out there that there's no such thing as being a good listener without being an active listener or a good communicator without being an active listener. And so if you think about put aside all distractions, put aside, um, put your phone on, upside down, turn it off, um, clear off all the screens, lean in, look at someone and really listen to them. Um, show that you're listening by like, like nodding at the right time, encourage them. Okay, so give me some more of that. Go a little deeper with that. What else do you have to say about that are all encouraging statements. Um, don't interrupt the speaker even if you disagree. That's a big one. Even if you disagree while you're listening, don't interrupt. I know some of you are saying, but if I tell them they're wrong right here, it'll save time. They won't have to say all this other stuff that is equally wrong. What happens is you interrupt the flow and their self-correction. Maybe they did say something incorrect, but maybe they'll fix it before they're done. Or maybe you'll gain new insight with the data and understand that they were actually right before they're done. So don't interrupt even if you think they're wrong. Encourage the speaker to continue by like not interrupting and by, by pulling information and by asking good questions. Paraphrase the speaker's message is a good way to show that you're active listening. As you paraphrase the message, um, you're literally showing them that you caught the high points of what they said. Try not to parrot them or just mimic them. Paraphrase. Put it in your own words. Show that you gave meaning to what they were saying. So active listening is about listening for the meaning and intent of what the speaker is saying. Set boundaries. People that have a high emotional IQ and low in narcissistic traits have boundaries. Um, they'll, they have boundaries in how they'll treat others and boundaries of how they'll be allowed to be treated. Be open to other perspectives. One of the biggest issues in our society, perhaps, and one of the biggest issues I see in married couples that are in trouble is they're not open to each other's perspective. They've decided that their perspective is correct and their partner's wrong, and they argue and compete with each other. It's way better to be open to what if my spouse has a perspective and new data that would change my mind and change my world and make my life better. Why shut them down and refuse to listen just because you believe they're wrong? What if you're wrong? What if they're wrong but need to get it all out and then hear how it sounds through your eyes and then they'll change? Why not be an active listener and be open to perspectives? Um, understand your emotional triggers. Emotionally intelligent people know their bias. They know what triggers them, and they're constantly being aware of and on the lookout for these triggers that uh, cause them uh, uh, to, to feel out of control. That's probably how it works. It causes them to feel a little bit out of control. So if you know your triggers and your biases, you can like soften them. You can be, a, you, you can know that they're, they're being hit and you can know that it's your trigger, not the person that's standing in front of you. Set personal and business goals. If you don't have goals, you're not heading anywhere. You're being pulled by the world or by others. If you have personal goals for self-improvement, You'll make massive improvements in your life. You'll move your life forward in a, in a massive way. And it'll be, uh, I can just picture it being incredible for you. So have personal goals, have business goals, have team goals. Some, some, probably the final thing that I'll put is emotionally intelligent people maintain a written schedule. Keeping everything in your head is like, like spontaneously moving through your day. And that's hard for your partners. It's hard for your spouses, kids. 
have a written schedule. Emotionally intelligent people are willing to have hard scheduled items that they don't move. They're sacred like date night, like couples council, like um, family night, dinner time with the family. Then they have flexible scheduled things like running kids to soccer and, and doing things like that. They can, they can maybe sometimes skip those things, but they can't skip certain things. And so they understand a schedule and how to maintain a schedule with a partner. Some tools in how to increase your emotional intelligence. Now remember, narcissists, borderlines, these personality disordered people are people that will not improve their emotional intelligence because they think they've arrived. They have this notion that while they have very little self-esteem and they have little, t just very little self-awareness, they believe how the world works is how they believe the world works. They strongly believe that everyone that sees the world different is just wrong, and they're intolerant of that. And so they find, they, they find criticism and, and they find um, contempt for everyone around them that thinks differently, and they set people up to fail uh, because they, they are threatened by other points of view and they're threatened by other perspectives. So they can't really handle hearing a perspective different from their own because it it means they might be wrong and that's devastating. It means they might be abandoned and that's even more devastating for the, the, the person with a personality glitch that, that, such as narcissism. So tools that you can practice to increase your emotional awareness, your emotional IQ and move you away from narcissism. Um, practice observing how you feel. Just practice, breathe, think, do some insight work and notice how you feel. Like right now, listening to this, Pause, how do you feel? Happy, sad, scared, mad. Number two um, idea or a tool for increasing an emotional IQ is pay attention to how you behave. Really notice when this happens, I behave this way. Like I jump to an argument when this happens or I feel defensive when this happens or I feel like I'm, I, I want to put up my dukes and fight when this happens. Pay attention to how you behave. Question your own opinions. That's something persons with narcissistic personality and borderline personality, histrionic personality, they never question their own opinions. Their opinions become law. There's a lot of people in our midst, maybe even you and I, have this idea that if it's a strongly held belief, it must be, it must be a fact. You know, really, there's not very many facts out there. You know, gravity might be considered a fact, but my opinion about the weather and, and, and 110 being comfortable is just an opinion. And so watch and be super careful by to start believing that your opinions are factual. Your opinions are just things that you believe based on your life experience. Another person's life experience might um, have them arrive at a whole different opinion. And really, they can both be correct. Okay. Take time to celebrate positive things. Self-aware people, high emotional IQ people, celebrate. They do little cartwheels when things go right. They celebrate their partners and their kids and their friends' achievements. Don't ignore the negative, but be tolerant. Don't ignore the negative, but be tolerant. High emotional intelligent IQ people, let me say that again, people with a high emotional intelligence uh, quotient um, notice the negative, but they're not intolerant, okay? Um, remember, emotionally intelligent people breathe. They pause, they take a breath. They're not short of breath, panicked all the time. When you feel that panic and you feel like you're maybe in trouble or you got this impending doom feeling, just stop and take a few breaths and think about what's going on. Do a little insight work. See how you're feeling. What's, what's uh, underneath the feeling? What are some of the thoughts driving the feeling? <clears throat> I said this already, but emotionally intelligent people should practice maintaining a schedule. Um, it's important to create a schedule and stick to it because that shows that you have some sense of awareness of where you're going. You're not just reacting to fires all day. Um, some people think that multitasking and reacting to fires all day is uh, intelligent, but really it's a lot of wasted energy. A, f a solid schedule that's a little flexible is the way to manage your life. And emotionally, emotionally intelligent people are able to do that. So practice it. If it's a, str if it's a weakness of yours, practice. If it's, if it's a strength of yours, keep doing it. Emotionally intelligent people are interested in what's going on around them. 
Narcissists are interested in how things affect them. Emotionally intelligent people are interested in, in them. Okay, very different. Emotionally intelligent people understand the power of choice. They know that everything they do is for a purpose and they make choices. They're not victims of much. They make choices and these choices have good consequences, negative consequences, and they're happy to move forward with both. We've talked about listening. I, got it. I can't stress it enough. Emotionally intelligent people are able to listen. Um, listening is a way to empathize. Empathize is the number one skill of happiness in a marriage and in a, in, in a personal life. Right. Listening gives you the ability to know someone enough to empathize or to feel with them. We all have a different perspective. Emotionally intelligent people share their perspective. And they're also willing to listen to other people's perspective with tolerance. Um, Persons that are narcissistic or persons that have a borderline personality will not listen to your perspective without contempt. They always think that you're foolish if your perspective is different than theirs. If your perspective is the same as, as yours, they absorb you and, and, and bleed you dry and then spit you out when they're disappointed in you. Stop being overly critical. Criticism, critical people. Uh, let me say that again. Um, s persons with a narcissistic personality are critical of others and they're disappointed in everyone around them. If you want to practice being emotionally intelligent and to have that high IQ factor of emotion, really use critiques positively. Give a good, healthy critique to lift someone. If you find yourself giving a critique to put someone down or put them in their place, that's narcissistic. If you're building them up and it's been requested of you, that's being open to, uh, to self-awareness and helping someone with their awareness. So these are some ideas on how to be emotionally intelligent. These are ideas on how to move your life forward away from narcissism. If you have narcissistic traits or personality, uh, this is a way to train your way out of it. Uh, get a coach, get some help, and uh, we will talk to you later. Thank you.